So tonight we're obviously focusing on the assignment for J JRNS 7321. I don't know why it says 7311 at the top. Um, so tonight is just basically what an NSS is, obviously, because this is new for you. It's just the support session that's there to help go through the um, assignment and make sure you don't have any questions or anything that I can clarify. We've got the session to work through it and break it down. OK, so just to obviously go through in terms of referencing, just remember that we've got up to minus 10 percent that we're allowed to deduct. I know you're very well aware of this. Um, but I just have to say it anyway, so just please be careful with your referencing. Make sure that you, um, you know, reference throughout the paragraphs, not only at the end of a paragraph. Make sure you use multiple uh, sources to verify the information with you guys being third year. We have to be super, super careful. That's all. That's OK. We probably will only take half now, so that's no problem at all. OK. So I just want you to remember that referencing is super important because I don't want to have to call anyone in, especially at third year level, for referencing because that's just a waste of our time. All right. So let's have a look at the actual question. So your essay is, it's only one essay, which is lovely. Um, and it is uh, 1,200 to 1,000, no, sorry, 2,000 to 2,500 words. So it is a longer essay, four to five pages, which is kind of average for third year level. And what this essay is going to be looking at is looking at the um, theoretical side of community activism and humanitarian journalism. All right. So if you go down to the bottom of page three, I've just zoomed in my side, you can zoom in your side so you can just see the words clearer. Um, it says journalism is a critical component in society, whether it is to be the voice to those in need or holding others accountable for their actions. Journalists have a significant role to play in the daily narrative across multiple genres, reaching a mass audience. Since the audience of new media uh, since, sorry, the introduction of new media, other challenges and ethical debates have arisen, impacting and changing the way we engage with the media. All right, so your academic essay is going to be focusing on three points. So the first three bullet points are the main, the main focus areas, and then the other ones are just speaking to the structure. Okay, so let's have a look. The first thing you're going to do is examine. So when they want you to examine something, they want you to look at it more in depth. They want you to break it down. They want you to uh, clarify, make sure that I can see that you understand the different genres. So that being community activism and humanitarian journalism specifically. And then what you're going to do. So with the first step is you're going to be defining and describing the specific genres. So tell me what community journalism is all about, what activism journalism is all about, what humanitarian journalism is all about. And then once you've done that, you're going to explain the importance of these genres to the journalism industry and society. So that's important because obviously the role they play for the journalism industry is different to that of society. And what we are looking at is their role the, in fulfilling the media's role of the fourth estate. So remember, we have our four estates being government, church, the people, and then the media. So the media acting as the fourth estate, they are there holding society accountable as well as themselves, as well as politi uh, politicians. So the media are there holding everyone accountable for their actions, including their own. So the media acts as the watchdogs looking over society. And when things are out of line, the media are there to say that's not OK. So for this particular um, question, you're looking at, first of all, it says the genres of um, these genres with the journalism industry. So how are they helping um, and working with the journalism industry to act in this fourth estate? So if we think of our community, our activism and humanitarian journalism, we holding um, the journalism industry accountable in terms of um, these these particular genres working with a bit of bias to enlighten us to what's happening in the world around us and 
where other forms of media um, act as maybe the more objective, factual, um, you know, no frills type of journalism. These particular genres of journalism help in terms of the description, the detail, the emotion. So these work these particular genres work in fulfilling those roles of being able to get to the deeper side um, and the deeper issues within society. Okay. And then we look in terms of society itself. It's that these, these three genres are trying to um, create change, create awareness, uh, you know, make us aware of what's going on in the world and holding us accountable in our actions. So, you know, when we're dealing with concepts of, of hunger and gender-based violence and all those kinds of things, the media has the role in educating and informing society so we know what is going on in the world around us. So the media has to tell us about the events unfolding and activism and humanitarian and community take on the specific role of informing and educating through emotion uh, to try and elicit change and a response. And also what they're doing with holding us accountable is we, they're able to say, listen, if you don't make the changes, then global warming will continue and things will get worse. You know, if we continue, um, global hunger will become a problem. Gender-based violence will not be stopped. So it's holding society accountable for our actions and trying to elicit change from us. Does that make sense? Any questions with regards to that, that particular point? Cool. All right. So once you have worked through that point, you're then going to move on to the next one. Please just remember paragraphs. I love paragraphs. Not one sentence paragraphs, but paragraphs that help break it up so that I've got space to comment and, you know, um, go through the content. So the next point, you're going to critically discuss the impact of digital culture and its influence on journalists, focusing on the dissemination of information. So dissemination means the sharing of information through new media. So for this particular point, what you're looking at is how digital cul culture has both positively and negatively impacted journalists sharing information. So if we look at the positive side of things, so in terms of us uh, using new media and uh, working in the social environment is that we have a major reach within society. So instead of you know stories being published and only reaching a small sector of society, we now have a global reach because something can be posted online and anyone anywhere in the world is able to actually engage and are able to um, read about what's going on. And so we have this global awareness, which we didn't have before. So that's really important. We able to get information from uh, what from around the world at the at a click of a button. So even though there's been, say, a mass shooting somewhere or there's been um, an earthquake or whatever it may be, we know about it just as soon as the other people around the world because of globalization and because of new media's reach. So we know things as and when they unfold. And that's something that's really important because it means that we are never living in a situation where we have a lack of reach or a lack of information being spread throughout the world. So the digital culture has actually helped in sharing and disseminating information. It's also helped having multiple perspectives because we're no longer just thinking about, you know, one perspective. We can go and read um, and engage with different media from multiple sectors throughout the world. So it means we have more perspective and that means that we have a more rounded understanding of the events that are happening around us. All right, so that's the positive, but then obviously the negative, we have things such as misinformation, fake news, people's mistrust of the media, people feeling that the media um, do not have their best interest at heart, um, you know, that within our community, our activism, humanitarian, that um, 
people are being too biased, that they're not producing content that is truthful and accurate. So the whole way through, through each of these points, you've got to bring in community activism humanitarian, for, well, in these two points, because the next one only focuses on one. And when you are speaking to the theory, what you're going to do is you're going to give me some theory, state the facts, then relate it to a real world example. So speak to how within community journalism, you know, it's not only about what's happening in your local community, but, you know, you can find out about communities in your surrounding areas. With activism, it's, for example, the Black Lives Matter movement might be an American-based movement, but there were people around the world protesting when after George, George Floyd was murdered. So it's that we have this ability to reach this audience based on our connectivity on a global scale. Does that second point make sense to you? It's a very straightforward um, assignment or part. It's just as long as you make sure you go through everything in detail. As long as you don't leave any of the points out, then you are good to go. All right. So then let's have a look at the last one. Okay, just zoom in your side. So the last point is looking at the ethics. Hey, Ali. So we're just talking about the third point of the POE. The Hello, guys. Hello. Okay. Uh, Larissa has to go by eight because of load shedding. So I'll go through this last point and then she can go and then I can go over the first two points again if you'd like. All right. So lastly, you're going to identify the ethical considerations which have arisen. So this is all looking at the ethics. So which have arisen in the global digital environment with specific reference to the genre of humanitarian journalis journalism and their tendency towards the use of bias to encourage societal change. So we've spoken about this in one of our online lectures about how, or our collab, sorry, that our humanitarian journalism deliberately is about a journalist choosing to write about a, um, a, a cause that is near and dear to their heart, that they choose to be biased towards, that they choose to speak up again uh, about. And with that, it's that with humanitarian journalism, we trust these people, we feel connected, and we feel that they're trying to do good. But at the same time, journalism is not meant to be about bias. But if they don't have bias towards their cause, how are they going to get awareness? So you have to identify the ethical things that we need to take into consideration when working with humanitarian journalism. And there's a very good example of a journalist by the name of Eduardo Mo um, Eduardo Martins, and he was a humanitarian journalist, a uh, photojournalist during um, in the wars like uh, Iraq and Afghanistan and all that. And it turned out Eduard Eduardo Martins was a fake. He basically catfished um, the world, including major publications like Huffington Post and New York Times and all that. So what this person did was they got photos that other people had taken did an image flip so that when you did an image search, it wouldn't pick up the picture and then sold those pictures as his own. And when he got caught, he, well, when the person, when people started to realize this person doesn't actually exist, um, he just tweeted, okay, bye guys, I'm off to Australia to surf. And that was it. And we never found out who Eduardo Martins really was. But because it was humanitarian journalism, everyone assumed he must be telling the truth that, you know, no one would take advantage of a terrible thing such as war, but he did. So what you've, what you're trying to do for this particular point is speak to the use of bias, but the use of bias for good, um, and that it has its role within the media. Um, but it's to try and encourage the societal change, trying to encourage people to um, take note of what's happening in the world around them. But at the same time, you know, we've got to make sure that the bias is not so extreme 
that we are, um, you know, starting to toe the line with uh, made up information rather than information which is truthful, accurate and fair. All right. Does that one, does that point make sense to you guys? Are there any questions? It's not be verified news Instagram accounts such as Al Jazeera. Yes. So that would definitely count. What you also need to look at is how journalists, while well, you know, that are working within humanitarian, even though they're being biased, that they're still transparent, transparent about that bias. They're not doing it to trick or coerce or anything. They're doing it because they are trying to bring change to the world. Right, what other questions? Yeah, exactly, Ali, fighting a cause. That's it. Um, okay, hi guys. So uh, at this point, we are going to touch on like, um, you know, unethical behavior as well, and also talk mm -hmm. about why the bias is necessary. Is that correct? Yes, that's okay. correct. Good, thank you. Sure. What else, guys? Also, it says the word count does not include the references. Should we stick with this? Um, did they say that earlier? Did they also put that in here? I didn't read that. Uh, oh, okay, note the word count does not include the references. Yeah, that's fine. That's 100% fine. That works in your favor. But listen, if, you add, if you've done your referencing correctly and you add 2,800 words, I'm not going to penalize you. So, yeah. I'm going to just take that into account. I don't expect you to go and count through the words. <laughs> Please don't go and do that to yourself. Just use your own discretion and just make sure that, you know, you are aware of what is expected and know that I just want you to write well and have lots of referencing. All right, any other questions from Larissa? Okay, cool. All right, then you go because you've got load shedding. And please message me if you've got any questions at all. Okay. First, okay. Have a good night. Yes, Ali, no, don't worry. I'll go over the other two points with you now. I just didn't want Larissa to sit on when she's already listened. Okay. So just to go over again, it is 2,000 to 2,500 words. Uh, you know that I'm lenient with that. That's like with Larissa asking about the um, referencing. So just be within reason. You're looking at a four to five page essay. All right. Just remember, keep your referencing tight. Use it throughout. Remember, you're writing in a formal academic manner, so not like Jern 2 and uh, Jern 1, sorry, and not like NCTE, like with media studies, just very formal, to the point, and um, very clean. All right. All right, so let's look at these two points. All right, so the first one you're going to do, it says examine the genres of community activism and humanitarian journalism and the importance of these genres to the journalism industry and society in fulfilling the media's role of the fourth estate. So what I'm expecting of you guys first is to define and discuss these three genres. So you should do some do um, community speak. I would define and discuss it and then how it relates in terms of the journalism industry and society as the in the uh, the role in the fourth estate. So remember, fourth estate is the media as the watchdogs, holding society, uh, public figures, and themselves and everyone accountable. 
so I would break it into three paragraphs, one on community and define it, discuss it and its role in terms of the journalism industry about informing local communities of events that are happening. Um, and then how community is important to society as a whole, um, both focusing on the media holding society accountable. So whether it be um, you know, your local municipality, whether it be government as a whole, but keep coming back to that role of the fourth estate. So you would do one on one paragraph on community, one on activism, and then one on humanitarian, or one to two paragraphs, let's say. So do community as a whole, activism as a whole, and humanitarian as a whole. And in each of those, you have to give me examples. So it's not only about um, what you do in terms of the theory, but I want those examples. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I'm with you. Yeah. You're with me. Yep. Okay. So that's the first point. Then the second point, you're going to critically discuss the impact of digital culture and its influence on journalists and the dissemination of information through new media. So what's important for this one is you've got to look at the positive and the negative because we have a tendency to focus on the negative. So you not you mustn't do that. We must look at both positive and negative. So the positive, for example, is that we have this global connectivity. So we are able to know what's happening in the world around us as and when things happen. We are able to communicate with people on a global platform. We are able to know what's happening in the States or the US or Saudi as it, as um, those events are happening as a South African population. It's that the digital culture gives us a taste into all these different worlds and we are able to you know, verify information, speak to different people, enlighten ourselves to the world around us. There is so much more than, you know, just what's happening in your country or in your community. All right. Yep. yep. And then, so, and then you can research anything to do with, obviously expand upon it. This is just my um, thoughts on it but then speak about community activism, humanitarian. So it's like, for example, with Black Lives Matter, even though it was a US based event, we look, you know, everyone around the world supported them. And that's because of so, the digital culture. Sorry, so sorry, um, lady, Anwin. So you want us mm -hmm. to link community activism and humanitarian to the second point also, as examples, yeah. as examples now, right? Yeah. So, so what I would do is I the examples, I would focus on those three. You don't have to, but I think it ties. It means that this, the first point it, ties. It will be coherent, definitely. It, it will flow. Yeah. It will flow much better that way. So, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. So the examples will touch on the three uh, types mm. of journalism. And yeah, that's mm -hmm. it from a digital okay. um, point of view. I've got it. I've got it. Thank mm. you. But then you also have to speak to the negative, like the 24 seven um, news run, the pressure to get stories out before verifying and checking um, the fact that there's so much misinformation, fake news, how we are so quick to share news that we think sensationalized or, you know, out there without checking whether it's truthful and accurate or what have you. I said Good. information spreads so much quicker online. Does that make sense? I'm with you. Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. Okay. I'm just making yeah. notes as we go going along on my phone. No, that's, that's, <laughs> that's what this is all about. Yeah. So those are the three. So your essay is divided into those three areas. So if you're looking at, even if you just want to get to the 2000 word mark, you're looking at, I think it's about 700 words per point. So you're looking at about a page, page and a half per point. And then intro and conclusion. When uh, can I just go back to the first point? When you say like yeah. we we de we define community um, activism and humanitarian, mm -hmm. and then we discuss mm. it. Uh, we discuss what, what do you mean by discuss the if I well. so that is the that is the discussion about what, what so when you define it, you're just stating what it's about. The discussion is about 
the the genre itself in terms of the journalism industry and society so you're discussing its role and where it fits in and then focusing on the fourth estate so okay, about right. it being a watch holding people yeah. accountable there we go i've got it so so the discuss refers to linking the concept to journalism that's it yeah yeah i've got it okay thank you what else no no this is clear we can continue thank you is that well, that's oh, a, that's, you, yes that's you're, reading, yeah. <laughs> you're reading this explain the third point so it's just these two points okay, yeah good um so that's that is the focus can, of it can, can you just show me the third point again please i just want to yeah, refresh my mind oh you know i will go through it as much as you need to just want to so see zoom this in uh, okay, I'm zooming. Um, yeah, I've got this. This is the bias story. And yeah, mm. okay, I've got it. Let me just make that note. Um, so um, Chia um, spoke, about, spoke, about, spoke about activism, right? But if you think about mm. it, in humanitarian journalism, the guy or the girl is supposed to be an activist because she's, uh, you know, writing for a cause, man. You know, so mm. by default, mm. it is it is uh, incorporating activism. That is what I was thinking. Maybe just in the rubric they place that word there, and then you know, yeah, because we already um, we already discussing humanitarian and activism in the first point, so that's mm. maybe the confusion. That's that's what I saw. Um, Okay, when I wrote it, it said it said humanitarian and activism, and then I think yes. they took the word one word out without making any other changes. I see. Show the bias and also uh, ethical considerations. Okay, I've got it, man. Yes, thank you. Can I ask a question? Uh, one more minute, right? So. No, um, for Daddy. Okay, so, um, you know, communication and journalism, it's like linked together, right? Everything yes. we're doing is actually linked together. So I, I, there was a question in communication. We, you know, when two companies merge, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then when the big player takes out the, uh, it takes out the small player, I would say acquisition, actually, not really a merge. But then they have influence, man. You know, the big players have yeah. influence who's gonna who's going to actually take the leading roles and you know and like marginalize culture and all of those things, like you know what I mean. So I was yes. um yeah, I, I wanted to ask you um let me just give me a second, I'm thinking that. Right? Um because I know you can answer brilliantly, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> um let me just check um yeah. Okay, so so if I want to motivate, um, I know for a fact that the small player, when they they when they merge, then they also they they're gonna get some money. So there is some you know some plus and advantages for them. But then how does how does that um, impact on? Let's say if we take South Africa now, right, and we take the the mm -hmm. television industry. Um, is that gonna deprive the people from let's say from being South African, can I can I argue it in that way? Because let's say if an American company takes over a South African company, then you would obviously want to play programming that's from America, man. You understand? And so mm -hmm. like the local talent will be marginalized. Can I motivate it that way? Because what the question yeah, is can. asking us what sorry, what the question yeah. is asking us is how um how does it affect the local culture and and it has to be, you know, examples of like you know prices of the movies will go up and how it will affect yes. the, the community man but if you do a, a, a research on google there's not much articles i promise you uh, lady and when yeah. there's not much articles on what really happens on the ground they will talk about yes this merger and that merger this one made that money so now it, it, it basically the south african whatever the uh, that one article was saying that even the the law of south africa doesn't protect you know the 
the um, the small player. So yes. the, if there's an article, they will only you know talk about that, but never really the people. So now if I wanna if I wanna if if I need to reference right, then it becomes a little bit uh, difficult because there's maybe one article that was written seven years ago, and then you guys not you guys I mean Varsity College want um, yeah. you know articles between five and recent. Men. So what do I do in that in that case? That was a little bit irritating, you know. So, yeah, because so I finished. What you... okay. Yeah, okay, sorry. sorry. No, no, continue. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay so, so, um, yeah, that was basically what was. I finished the comms. The comms is due after yours, which is like on the 14th. Yours is the 14th, that's the 21st. But it was a long assignment. And the last question is about mergers. And then I leave that yes. question because I just wanted to get more information about it, basically. Yeah. Okay, so, what me. you need to think about. Okay, so what you need to think about with comms, when there's the acquisition of a global company with locals, so what often happens is they will, what, and you can find, you can find research on this stuff where they will outsource to, they won't hire locals, they'll hire and outsource to external companies that are cheaper. Um, it means, like you said, that the, the, the smaller company get marginalized, that yeah. the the local culture gets pushed aside for a global culture. And that you can find, you know what you must look at, the NCTE textbook. Because okay, that has stuff. Because that was talking about um, workplace culture and all that. So there is stuff in there that you'll be able to use. Um, and what you need to find is like, uh, for example, um, so obviously Take A Lot is owned by a South African company, um, but Amazon has bought into SA, so they bought other companies and now they're coming in and that's now, okay, so it doesn't really help because then that's impacting Take A Lot and with prices and stuff, but, what you, but that won't help. But what you can, what you can bring in is that um, when a, when a, international company merges with a local company is it puts pressure on external companies uh, because they don't have the same resources that that big international company has so there's okay. that as well yes um, so the, you can yes it's for and against i'm listening to you uh, lady and i'm listening yeah. yes um i'm just trying to think what else so um also how people within the company can get marginalized because um, they, their voices aren't heard because they're not part of the bigger company. So you just need to try and Google um, something impact of um, I promise you there's not much. I promise you I've, <laughs> I've looked and looked and looked. Yeah, and so I, have, it, I, I, I worked in, in like research before this, man. So I know how to use Google, like, you know, and words. No, and no, you do, yeah. And, and that's why you'll see when I when I respond to my to questions, it's always from a source that I just take in and I put it in my own words, but it will never actually mm. be mine. You know what I mean? And so mm. that that's why I, I came from that background and I checked and I checked and I can't find, honestly. And it was so irritating, you know. <laughs> Imagine you you have the stuff in your in your brains, but you can't get the source for it. I know what yeah. to, to write. I know exactly what to write, but I can't find a source. You know, it's crazy. I'm trying to think. Yeah, it's that you've got to find companies that. So, for example, one company that I can think of is Game, because Game okay. has been bought out by a U.S. company. I think it's Kmart or something. Um, but then how do you link that to media? How do you link that to, to, to a media merger? Oh, uh, so does it have to be a media merger? It has to be a media. That is the issue, yeah. Lady Anwen. You Like, I promise you, I, I was working for iPrio. iPrio was bought by by um, S&P Global. S&P Global, sorry, by IH, IHS Market. IHS Market was bought by S&P Global. I was working in Cape Town. The, so I, I went through this in my working career. You understand? We thought, okay, if I is yeah. gonna 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 buy a um, iPro, we're gonna get more salaries. It was never the case. 
<laughs> it was never the case. Then when S and P yes, when S and P took over IHH IHS market, that was when I was here, and then my my colleagues were telling me that um that I was working with previously, they actually increased the salary from fifteen thousand to twenty four thousand. So that was a very good one. You you understand? So sometimes people's mm -hmm. salaries increase, but sometimes it don't. You know so. Mm -hmm. I have the, the real life examples with me, man, but I can't find the media mergers, honestly. Does it have to be local or can it be international? Um, the example is an international example, but then the question is find South African examples. Let me just uh, see quickly. Um, uh, sorry for taking your time now like this, right? That's fine. Um, Companies. Um, Look okay, at it says here, how do mass media mergers affect South African audiences, if, uh, if at all? That's it. And uh, uh, discuss your thoughts on whether media mergers are beneficial or detrimental like that to the diversity within mass media around the world, as well as from a South African perspective. So, yeah, in the, if I can touch on, on, on around the world, but in the South African part is a bit of a, a problem, mm. you know. That's, I'm just looking, China is buying African media silence. Actually, on the, co just... on the collab, I said, <laughs> I said to Dr. Mashant, listen here, when he mentioned the Chinese, I said, yeah, if they, if the, if the, if the uh, media guys take over, like the big players take over, then they, they quiet the government, man. <laughs> they quiet the government, yeah. so the government will never, they will never change the policies, you understand? <laughs> And then we look at China. China's taking over South Africa. It's crazy. Honestly, it's crazy. Yeah, well, we need money. <laughs> we need and money. So we have money. Content to show us what happens when big companies take over. Okay. I'm getting some... Okay, I'm finding some decent links. I'll send them to you and see if they help. Um, Perfect, because, yeah. I don't know if they will, but you can at least... I'll browse, I'll go for everything, yes. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, thanks, man. Thanks. Uh, I, I will work on I will work on this part this weekend. And yeah, okay. I'll think I'll be done. Okay, thank you, man. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye, Ali. Bye.